Just jitters and excitement, waiting to see what's gonna happen. You know, it's been a long, a long process. You know, this pre-draft process all the way from the end of the Frisco Bowl. It's been, uh, it's been long, but it's went by fast. So it's kind of just like you want to kind of get that next step going and you kind of see where you're headed. Woo! I talked about six people. You know, they were passing the phone along in the room. So, uh, but you know, head coach, GM, you know, position coach, all that kind of stuff. But, People, a lot of congrats, and uh, they were excited. Yeah, I mean, I had a good, you know, top 30 visit with them. I knew that they had depth issues, and I was expressed, so I was part of the reason, you know, having them bring me in. And D-line coach and I get along really well, and the scheme is very similar to what I've been doing, so um, it was kind of like a, a no-brainer, at least in my eyes. And, you know, as the draft kind of went along. They weren't really drafting the, the linemen, so it was kind of in the back of my mind, but um, I'm just super grateful and um, I'm excited. It seems like a really good fit. Back on J Sports Bar, our Super Bowl series continues this week at Calicaniho and joining us in studio, Scott Matlock, the great Scott Matlock on hey. eighth round pick of the Chargers last year. I got to be there for the moment. It was absolutely awesome. Scott, we appreciate you joining us. How are the, uh, the first few uh, weeks of the off season going, I guess, for you. Uh, it's going good. I mean, you know, took some time to rest and you know recover after the season, but I'm already you know back in the gym training. You know, started slowly. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. go too crazy. You know, we're building ups um, so that when OTAs come, I can hit the ground running and be my best kind of thing. So, uh, but it's been good. It's been good to be back mm -hmm. in Idaho and. Um, you know, back home and see all the family and friends and stuff. It's, it's, it's been good. Do you feel like you can finally breathe again? Like I remember talking with, whether it be Leighton Vanderish or other guys that, you know, are drafted in the NFL, you go from the season to the bowl game, to the NFL combine, to the NFL draft, to training camp, excuse me, to rookie training camp, to mm -hmm. training camp, to the season. Mm -hmm. do, do you feel like you can finally, finally breathe again for the first time in a while maybe? Yeah, it was definitely the first break that, you know, I've had in like a long time. Yep, mm -hmm, yep. Um, but I didn't, it's, it's like in the moment, you don't really realize it. it's all just like a big blur. Yeah. Um, yeah. From your last game at Boise State till end of last game of your first rookie season, what, what was your favorite part in that span of time? And what was the part where you're like, let's get, let's get on with this and get over it? <laughs> I would say the part, the part I probably least like and needed, wanted to be done and over with was was you know the the draft process mm -hmm. you know doing all this training from combine to mm -hmm. you know being like a track athlete having to run all these mm -hmm. drills like not really the sport I'm trying to train for here you, you know? flew though you uh, flew on pro day when you when you did that I had a good day track good athlete day. track <laughs> athlete um, but you know from all the like the, the the visits Zoom calls it's just you know it's, it's like you're in yeah. high school getting recruited again it's yeah. just recruiting and it was all this work of months and months of you know training twice a day and it was just like I. You, that desire to get the reward, like the end goal, like mm -hmm. all this training is for what? And it has it was taking forever, it felt like a little yeah. bit. So um, that part was not fun, but I mean, in the end it was all worth it, of course, but um, that wasn't um, too, too fun. But I think the best part was definitely just the season itself. I mean, going and playing in, you know, all these different stadiums like Arrowhead and US Bank and, you know, being around, you know, my teammates, you know, Justin, Khalil, Joey, I mean, Mm -hmm. All these guys, DJ Keenan. I mean, just meeting these guys and just hanging around them and just the whole team. It's the whole season was definitely my favorite part. Yeah. So, so you say that you're over yeah. the the shirtless compression short only <laughs> workouts where people just stare at you and wonder <laughs> how fast you can run. Yeah. You're you're over that. It does not get comfortable. For now. For now. For now. Yeah. For now. Maybe swing by off the field and you can catch a yeah. catch a glimpse of that if you're really really down <laughs> for that. Shout out to Taylor over yeah. there. Um, Shout out to you. For for you like. I mean, if you're a sports fan, which you are, there's, there's no way you can't have, like, at least that little moment where you walk into a locker room and you're like, hey, it's Joey Bosa. Whether it be Justin Herbert or um, any of those guys, Keenan Allen. Like, how, how long did it kind of take you to just kind of process that and then have it just become the every regular day thing where you just show up and you're like, oh, that's yeah. my teammate now? Yeah, I mean, I think it happens quicker than – some might think. I mean, yeah. obviously at first you're like, 
like, you know, there they are kind of thing. <laughs> but, like, at the same time, you're not going to be, like, googly-eyed over them. And, you you know, can't be, right? Like, like, be a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to, you know, you got to make a first impression. But, I mean, just be yourself. I mean, that was, I mean, I'm always going to be myself. And mm -hmm. I'm going to acknowledge, like, yeah, like, these are, like, real dudes. And mm -hmm. it's awesome to get to meet them. And then, you know, you kind of get into, like, the daily routine. And yeah. then you're kind of focused on doing well. And you, you really don't care about who you, who's next to you. You're trying to... to to do good, so That's exactly uh, it didn't right. take it didn't take a long. long. And you met, uh, we saw a clip. I think the NFL posted it. Maybe it was preseason, or maybe it was season already. Travis Kelsey, you, you saw yeah. him after the game, shook his hand. How was that? I was, How was uh, that meeting was like with game. Him? I was like, we just got into like you know our like divisional games, yeah. so I think it was yep. probably around the halfway mark. But yeah, I mean, I just I'm all like I'm just trying to be a sponge. You know, obviously it's my first year, and I just want to learn as much as I can. So obviously, you know, he's a great player and. He wasn't the only person I asked. I mean, every team we play has yeah. a, a, a player of a high caliber that I could possibly learn something from, no right. matter what position. So, um, obviously, you know, the NFL took it and ran with it and stuff. And yeah. I got some heat for it, but it's it's, <laughs> it's all good. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, he gave me great advice, and I applied it, and I think it, it helped. But it was pretty cool. What What is the most important thing in that uh, process of fitting in a locker room as a rookie, Scott? Like. We talked to Khalil Shakir earlier this week, and he says, you know, he went from being a team captain at Boise State where he tried to be more vocal in the locker room to in the NFL, he's a younger guy. And so it was almost like he was a freshman in college all over again where he's not mm -hmm. so vocal and he's yep. just kind of listening and learning and, and things like that. And he said, don't worry, though, when the, when the time comes, I'm going to be ready to take over and lead. But for right now, uh, this is, this is going to be my process. So for you, as you are now through your rookie year, and you look back, like what is important in how you fit in in a locker room? Um, I feel like you just have to like know your role. Yeah. And like, you know, I mean, yes, like you, like I was a draft pick and they see something in me and they, and I can have an impact immediately. Um, especially, you know, with the Chargers who were down some D linemen and stuff kind mm -hmm. of thing. But I mean, just know your role and like you're a rookie and like, these guys are getting, like have been playing for eight, 10 years. Like they know what they're doing. Like right. they're not gonna, do or say anything that they haven't already seen or that they already know, right? Mm -hmm. So um, just like doing your job, like not doing, you know, dumb things, you know, helping out when, when you can, you know, cleaning up stuff, doing all the rookie things. But at the end of the day, it's like you got to do your job and uh, make sure that they can count on you. And there's a sense of accountability. But mm -hmm. I think just knowing your role and um, like fitting in to that is, is the biggest thing. Kind of like a freshman at, in college. Like you're not gonna come in and be vocal and they got like, no one's right. gonna listen to you, right? right yeah. So it's like, you just gotta come in, you gotta learn everything. You gotta learn the culture the process and um, develop, grow. It's, it's, it's really the same thing. Shake the number 62, get into something more fitting like 99. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden yeah, you, definitely you look shake. a little cooler, you play a little uh, better. Absolutely. Um, I, you had, in my, in my time of being a sports reporter, you provided me with the coolest quote that I have ever heard out of an athlete on your draft day. You remember what you said? I got an idea. <laughs> got He's an like, idea. remind me. <laughs> They're gonna get a straight up killer. I mean, I mean, when I put the helmet on, it's a, it's a, it's a gladiator going into the Coliseum, you know, so um, I'm coming for souls. I mean, I'm gonna take a grown man's job. I'm just curious, Scott, did that make its way to LA at all and and at the same time how how important man, is it to have that mindset you are a yeah. paid professional now mm -hmm. you want to be on a 53 man roster if you have anything short of that mindset you'll be at home on the couch yeah so how yeah, yeah exactly i mean it, it you know it's it's to some people it's it's funny and like to me it's funny but oh, i don't know. I, think, I don't think it's funny i thought it was awesome it's funny <laughs> awesome but like at the end of the day like you this is i mean this is 1% of 1% of you know, absolutely it's, it's like you have to have that mentality to go in there and like to take it mm -hmm. like if you want it you got to take it and like that has to be a part of your like MO like mm -hmm. that needs to be hardwired into your brain and that's something that just was instilled in me a long time ago and um, but I don't know if it made his way all the way down to LA I mean I think there was a time where we were in like practice or something but mm -hmm. and Slater Rashawn Slater he like you know, we walked by each other, or whatever, and he was like, "It's the soul snatcher." But I don't know Ooh. if that was like a ginger joke or like, yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. But I didn't, I didn't even 
I didn't even comment on it or. I'll take that nickname, bro. Yeah, you go, hey, as long as I am yeah. snatching snows, you call me whatever I mean, you want. You know what <laughs> I mean? yeah. So, but like, yeah, so it's, uh, but yeah, it's definitely just like a, I mean, it, it's a mentality you have to have. So. Uh -huh. What, uh, it was funny. Yeah. you hear stories of rookie, bring the rookies in and make them do the rookie thing, whether it's in mm -hmm. training camp where you get up and sing something or whatever, yeah. or if it's rookie dinner and now the rookie's got to pick up the tab. Mm -hmm. What were some of those things that, Happened, happened to you, maybe it did or maybe it didn't uh, in terms yeah. of bringing you in as a rook? Yeah, I think that I was very lucky and my vets were were really good. They took care of not just me, but the other rookies um, there. Um, and they didn't really make me feel like a rookie. Mm -hmm. Like they brought me in and they, you know, they laughed with me, they joked with me, you know, we, we talked like there was, mm -hmm. obviously like everyone knew like the, the totem pole, so to speak, but like yeah. they didn't really, make it like obvious right so they, they brought me in and you know they were kind and you know caring and you know they were you know give me coaching points this and that and they you know treated me like one of their own but mm -hmm. I mean as far as you know the rookie stuff I try to you know can like do it do something daily where it was like after practice you know go grab like a stack of towels and you know hand them out you know just just like that little piece here and there but obviously like you know there's a rookie talent show and mm -hmm. people you know you have to sing or you could like tell a joke I told a joke <laughs> um I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna. For the locker uh, room. For the locker room. For, yeah, for the locker room. But I mean, it was good. There was no uh, rookie dinner as That's far good. as that. Um, Save your money. A little man. bit of. <laughs> there's a, some philosophy into that. You know, some coaches don't like it. Some do. Whatever. But sure. uh, so I just you know got some bottles of you know booze and send some other stuff for some of the older guys. But nice. Um, overall, I mean, just. You know, I think the big part of it is being accountable and doing your job. And, you know, obviously, if you play well on the field and you have their back, like, they're going to treat you a little bit better. So, Do you have, um, if we're, like, ranking the top 100 or so hairstyles in the NFL, like where, where do you think you're at on that list? Hmm. At top 100? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, I got to be at least top 25, I feel like. I, I think so. Yeah. With the fresh, I mean, it has to be freshly cut. I'm okay. assuming everybody's, like, fresh. Yeah. I mean, I feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm top 25. Uh, you, you ever get uh, compliments on, on your look and what you got going on? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I think it's Never. unique. I think you own it. I, I, I think it's awesome. Absolutely, um, yeah. What is it like? What are you 23 now? Yep. 20, 23. 23 years old, living in L.A. Well, I, living in oh, Idaho, I guess. You. Yeah. But, but, you know, for at least 17 weeks of the year, more than that even, yeah. Living in, time, yeah. li li half and half, I living in L.A., 23 years old, NFL football player. And, oh, by the way, you, you did grow up here, and you're from Homedale. And, I mean, the, the juxtaposition there is, is pretty wild, Scott. Mm -hmm. So, like, what, what, is, what is it like getting to do that, live that life? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's a dream come true. I mean, it, mm -hmm. like, when I say I'm living the dream, I mean, I truly mean it. And it's, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's cool, especially being in Cali where they treat you a little bit differently than – they would here in Idaho, as far as better. And here in Idaho, no one really gives, no one really cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no one really, really cares. But um, that's good. I mean, I like that. I mean, I, all this, you know, status and whatever. You're in LA, and you know, like it can, it can corrupt you a little bit and mm -hmm. turn you bad. But I mean, I just, you know, made, you know, kept the main thing, the main thing. Yep. And I wanted to, you know, have a good rookie season and do all these things. And you know, that's just kind of where my priorities were but I mean it's definitely cool you know going out to like dinners with uh you know the weekly dinners with the defense is something we did and that was cool to go out to these new places mm. and, um you know there's like 10 to 20 of us so yeah just pick, well like pick like a Tuesday night or something or what Friday nights Friday nights yeah okay. um Friday nights on home games okay it was kind of what we did and um upstairs just set it up and but it was yeah I mean it was always cool so um but yeah I mean it's I'm living the dream for sure. Yeah. I mean. I, I remember at the L.A. Bowl, I look over, and we're in the press conference room, and it's right next to your guys' locker room. Heck, you've probably done press conferences there, I'm assuming, maybe. I don't know. But I, I look oh, over, yes, yes. and perfectly framed through the doorway yeah, is it, it, Scott Matlock's yeah. locker. It does. Right? That's cool. Yeah. yeah. It does. That's cool. So I, I snuck in there. I did a stand-up yeah. in front of it just because I, I had to, right? Oh, of course. Um, you guys, you play in the most expensive sports venue in the world. I mean, it's it it lives up to the hype. Um, what what is it is? Are there any like, what, what's the coolest thing about that that place? Like when you get to step inside there. 
I mean, it's it feels like a like the Coliseum. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like it's it's I mean, you're just sunk so deep into the ground probably because of the LEX, so they can't build it up high. Right, right. So I mean You see planes flying through the translucent roof though. Yeah. I mean like yeah, that's I mean, cool. It's yeah. I mean it's it's a, such a cool and environment and you know the with all the modern you know tech they have into it mm-hmm. i mean it's 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 really just like it's like a big show yeah mm-hmm. really but it's awesome what was, what, about, what about um there you had an offensive coordinator that people here in boise know pretty well mm-hmm. uh. how, how much time did you spend with kellen moore like and what was your yeah. like first interaction with him when you maybe you finally got to la and did you ever pitch maybe being like an extra blocker mm-hmm. Or an eligible receiver in any offensive package. Uh, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with them because you know offense and defense. Uh, we obviously split yeah. a lot, yeah. and um, we spent our you know our times separate. But you know, we passed each other in the hallway you know, mm-hmm. all the time, and you know, uh, you know at practice I would you know sometimes go stand by him or you know chit chat or whatever mm-hmm. else. But as far as that, I mean, I didn't want to push it or like <laughs> if, it's, if it happens, cool. If not, mm-hmm. like I'm, I got. Job A first. Yeah, um, I'm gonna worry about that. You, Kelly, I know you saw my catches in college. You know Utah yeah, State. They know. Indiana everybody knows. Zone, and yeah, everybody knows. And uh, mm-hmm. on Fridays we would do instead of like a normal like D line indie, we would always like mess around and like run routes. Okay. And catch yeah. you know catch passes from our coach. So maybe he saw, maybe he didn't. But I'm not gonna push it if it happens. Great. If not, I feel like I gotta earn my stripes to get on that a little bit that's yeah, fine certainly so that, that's fine I, every time i see that i would see the lions they were like notorious for bringing in that extra blocker and usually it would be an offensive lineman yeah. but i always thought like man when we see 99 for the chargers doing that be pretty cool um for you know you got you got a coaching change right mm. so what what is that whole process like and yeah is, uh, it, is, it, is it is it scary is it you know a new new beginning like how what what do you think of it it's definitely something interesting because Everybody who, you know, brought me into the organization, you know, general manager, head coach, position coach, mm-hmm. I mean, they're all, they're all gone. Right. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, like, what do you make of that kind of thing? And, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I can't control anything right now except for my training and mm-hmm. coming into OTAs and putting my best foot forward and making a first impression and doing all these things, and, you know, being coachable, learning new technique possibly or mm-hmm. and a new scheme maybe. So, um, studying a bunch I mean, of Michigan film, being very complimentary of what they've done the last decade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things. A lot I think of things. You're gonna so, be a good spot for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, it, it was definitely a weird feeling, like mm. what could happen. But um, I'm also cheap, so that helps. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah so. for sure. What was your reaction yeah. though, Jim, Jim Harbaugh, man? Like, that's. I was excited. Yeah. Um, very good coach, um, and I actually talked to you know Big Mike uh, this morning about it when he was in San Francisco. I, like a potty, right? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I never thought about that. He was uh, locally, played for Idaho. And then and uh, for, was that, did he, and then also uh, uh, Purcell, too. Okay, he, Purcell he played a, for the Niners for yeah. a while? Yeah, Okay. for a little bit. And then, uh, and I mean, I, there's nothing but good things said about mm-hmm. uh, Coach Harbaugh as far as his coaching ability. And you see the success. I mean, everywhere he's been, he's, he's won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think he's going to come in and, you know, build a, culture which is what we need and I think it's going to be good so I'm really excited yeah personally I'm really excited It'd be you great you don't go in like rocking a rocking a fresh set of, set of khakis you know they're super yeah. comfortable <laughs> you something yeah. break break the ice with them khakis man I wear them all the time they're <laughs> yeah. they're comfortable you know <laughs> have you have you talked to them yet I mean it's so different in the NFL I know like when Boise State went through their coaching change it's like hey everybody team meeting at 11, we need to take you through what's going on. Mm-hmm. The NFL everybody, is like yeah. everybody's spread out all over the country. When does that process take place? When you actually get back down there and start working out again? Or like, how does that work in the NFL? I mean, I haven't, I mean, I haven't talked to Coach Harbaugh yet. I mean, I've had a couple texts, you know, yeah. and, uh, him just, you know, I- introducing himself and yeah. you know, vice versa kind of thing. But yeah. um, like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm not probably someone he has to worry about. And uh, so, I'm, but when I get down there, I'll, you know, build a relationship and, do yeah. that kind of stuff so I get you do you feel like you become acclimated to living in LA because we got to know if we come and check you out <laughs> where we got to stay what do we got to see and what do we eat most importantly yeah when people come where's like yeah. the one place we got to see and one place we got to eat so we our facility is in uh, Costa Mesa okay uh, Orange County area yeah. close to Newport Beach Huntington Beach all that kind of stuff Great so spot. so that area is pretty nice it's not as 
crowded and mm -hmm. you know it's less populated it's less traffic it kind of reminds me of like just a little bit bigger version of the treasure valley mm -hmm. cool, yeah. a little bit so it was actually it was actually not a bad you know transition weather is amazing i mean it yep. was 70 and mm -hmm. sunny every day um i think it rained once when i was there wow Run <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, spoiled it was it was nice i mean you're from hawaii so let's <laughs> yeah. let's 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 relax <laughs> but um i mean there's we went to a lot of places you know every week we went mm -hmm. out to dinners but one spot it was called joey's um it's kind of i don't even know how to describe it they have everything they have you know burgers pasta seafood i mean they got you know cool drinks i mean it was one stop uh, shop it was a uh, yeah it, it was nice the 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 atmosphere is good um that was my personal fave spot honestly all right uh, but there's some other spots that are pretty good too so now, now that the yeah. off-season's here, Kay Kala en enlightened me on something the other day that I, I know that you're passionate about golf and that you're a very good golfer. Mm. For some reason, I didn't know that you, you did it in high school at a pretty elite level. Like, I, I think I was just distracted by all the football stuff. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. Yeah, golf in high school, all four years. So this is something you've long been passionate about. Like, when, when did yeah. you first start to like golf? And, and, well, and, do you, and, and this might be a weird question. Do you like golf or do you like football more? <laughs> that, I mean, I love, the time of year. <laughs> I love them both. I love them both, but it's they're they're different loves. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I I got into golf when I was when I was thirteen. Okay. Uh, you know, like uh, one of the at my second foster home, I was at family friends, and I knew that their son played high school golf, and you know, one day, you know, I was like, hey, you want to come to the range, and you know, and then you happen to hit hit a ball good and you see it, you know, go and fly and then you just oh, get yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Hooked. Just takes and one. It just it, takes it does, one. Because yeah. for me, there's like a, just there's 99 one. other ones that <laughs> yeah. suck. But I'm like, yeah. that one. Oh, yeah. That one. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's kind of how it started and we went, you know, and a couple times a week on the weekends, mm -hmm. you know, just to the range and and then when I got to, then I moved to Homedale and, you know, started my high school journey there and the springtime came around. I didn't want to do track, so yeah. I was like, I'm going to golf. <laughs> Went on the golf team, and the rest is, the rest is history. Went to a couple state tournaments as a team, uh -huh. and uh, it was fun. It was Did fun. you guys have any, um, like, team organized, hey, golfing with the Chargers deal, where you guys go to mm. some country club or course close to you guys, and people get to come hang out with you guys, and you guys golf? Did that, did yes. that happen? Yes. It was in the... In the OTAs, yep. or like you know, after rookie mini camp and all that stuff, um, there was a golf event, and you know they asked around, and I was like, "Yes, I'll join." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, Did you surprise some folks when you showed up, and they would? Well, when I brought when I first showed up, and I brought like my golf clubs, they were like, "Who is this?" Like, guy? yeah. Uh, you, are you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty you know, good. I'm not yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a golf event at a course down there called Rolling Hills, and it was kind of like one of us players would be with, you know, three other, like, boosters, mm -hmm. or, you know, supporters. So, and we played 18 and uh, scramble, and it was, uh, it was, it was pretty good. A lot of people were, yeah. the, at least my group, I had to carry the team, but <laughs> they were, I mean, we had a great time. They had, like, booths set up on, like, every like three holes where you could That's you know fun. do like painting or like some activity it was kind of it was pretty cool but yeah. uh, I, 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 when i first got out of college i was working at uh, up in seattle a place called root sports and got to cover some a bunch of mariners and seahawks and back then sonics for that matter but there was a uh, there's a golf event with the the, the uh, mariners right charity event there were, there were guys getting out of their car that just stopped by Pro golf, whatever golf shop, they're unwrapping their clubs oh my <laughs> on, on the yeah. tee box, and you can, I, I'm like, well, I'm watching this because this, there's no way this this is going to go how they think it is off the first tee, and they're yeah. like, dropping bombs in different directions <laughs> or whatever. But but we got we got Scott Matlock is the uh, the ringer of the Chargers apparently. Is the, is there a better golfer on the Chargers than you? Yes. Okay. Uh, Josh Harris, he's our long snapper. He's been. Oh yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, those, he's, those I mean, he's like he's 30. He's, he's the oldest on the team. I forget how old he is, but wow, I think he's like sure. 34, 35. Okay. He, say, but he shoots in the 70s. Like Specialists and like special teamers, they're dialed in on a different level yeah. when it comes yeah. to golf because it's the same thing, you know, like repetitive, one motion, you get really good at it to an extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just take that to the golf course and yeah. do the same exact thing. Some of those kickers have time to even think about it. Specialists are just good at like <laughs> weird things. Yeah, <laughs> random stuff. Our like, specialists were like ping pong fanatics huh. in FIFA. They would just play the Xbox in the locker room and then yeah. play ping pong. 
You're like, then, how can one person be good at this random thing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what people think of me when I say golf. That's true. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I do. I I I remember like when you said you were good at it, and even on draft day, out at your draft party, yeah. they, they had the golf simulator set set up, and I was like, I was more excited to see you swing a golf club. <laughs> You know, being a defensive tackle at close to 300 pounds, I'm like, I got to see how this goes. Close to 300 pounds. I live above 300 Sorry. pounds all the time. Come okay. on. Sorry. On the, on the, Big body. On, the on the plus side. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. My normal. <laughs> I, guess, I'm, I guess I'm going off uh, maybe the Boise State days or something like that. But I had to see that. And it's uh, it's actually a little bit of poetry there, man. I, I got to say, you're you're pretty graceful with it. I, I didn't. I don't know if I expected that out of you. Oh, so. yeah. Tempo Finesse. town. Yeah. Tempo town, baby. That's um, right. <laughs> so, so you come back home, and, and what, what is it like? You, what, what, what's next in, in terms of setting up your, your lifestyle, your success? Are you a homeowner yet? Are you exploring that? Um, what, what do you want to, what do you want to do this or accomplish this off season to, you know, put you in a good spot, you know, personally, so you can continue to, to excel professionally? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, keep doing what I'm doing, what I have been doing, just yeah. keep the main thing, the main thing, like, you know, like, what am I envisioning long term? Like, what do I want to, like, what do I want, want my life to be in five years? What do I want my life to be in 10 years, right? And, and just work at that every single day. And, um, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes, you know, day by day work. So, uh, but no, no house yet or anything. I'm just, you know, trying to, you know, save as much as I can. You yeah. know, I'm starting that and in investing and stuff. And, um, um, you know, just taking care of the fam and hanging out. And, you know, I'm not, I'm just being myself. I'm not going to, you know, change and yeah. become somebody I, uh, that's not me. So I'm just yeah. going to keep doing my thing. I love, I love your brother, man. Steven's awesome. Yeah, I, I hope I'm allowed, I hope I'm allowed to joke a little bit with him though. Um, if you're, if you're looking to get in, in the ice bath, <laughs> um, do you have to like reserve that with him? Cause I, man, I, I see him on Instagram, man. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's an ice bath king. He yeah. gets after it. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've, yeah, we both have been, um, doing that for a long time. Obviously mm -hmm. in college and, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of where my fix of it started. And then, you know, he got into it from, um, I don't know where he got it, but he got it. You know, we go, th we all, we both go through phases and stuff and we get really into something, but yeah. Um, yeah, he, I mean, in the winter months of Idaho, you know, he's put a horse trough out there Dude, filled with tough. water. Um, he's tough. We put a heater in it so it doesn't freeze completely. Okay. Um, obviously like nowadays it's not going to freeze, but, um, as there's stuff you don't think uh, about though, you yeah. gotta, like you got to keep it heated to an extent if it's 10 degrees. Well, like what? Five like three weeks ago, it was like, or it was like three weeks ago. Yes. You know, it was, it was, snow. It was like single eight. digits. Yeah. 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 So, um, I mean, that's like when I, you know, posted that video, it was, the water was 38 degrees. So yeah. it felt amazing. Yeah. It felt amazing. <laughs> I it bet, awesome. dude. Just a savage. I'm crazy. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Just a savage. <laughs> I mean, I kind of joke so around good. about it, but I'm serious. Like so your, your brother's awesome. And I don't think there is a bigger fan of Scott Matlock than, than your brother. Like what is, yeah. what is his support meant to you? And, um, I know like he's all in, like I've gone out and shot, you know, stuff with you working out and Big bro's right. Well, now he's little bro, but big bro's right there with you. He'll you know what I mean? Like, so what? Bro. What? What is? What has he kind of meant to you? And and uh, I'm gonna sh shout him out too because I Absolutely. think I think he's ex they're expecting right him and his yep. him and his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So congratulations. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Congrats. It's gonna be uncle. Cool uncle mode engaged. That's right. That's oh, it's right. the best. Cool uncle yeah, mode. Yeah, it's the best. And uncle, you are yeah. the best. You got a chance to be a very cool. Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta keep it going. You gotta yeah. keep it going. Yeah. yeah. That's what really matters here. Yeah. Um, no, I mean he is. Uh, I mean he is. Uh, he's the best. I mean everything yeah. that you know we've been through, and obviously our our age gap has played a lot into our roles. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know he had to grow up very, uh, very young and you know mature and you know, kind of maybe be the man of the house when you know we we lost our parents and stuff so but mm -hmm. i mean for him in my eyes he's always been something i looked up to and who i inspired to be and i think you know through high school you know watching him play college ball because of the age gap you know five years he was in college when i was in high school just watching him and seeing all the things he was doing just you know kept you know kept reminding me of like where like what I need to do, like where yep. I need to be. Because mm -hmm. um, I could have easily strayed along and mm -hmm. so, could have, so could he, but um, you know, we did it together and you know, but he's, uh, love that guy mm -hmm. more than anything. Um, so. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. love that guy. Well, you've uh, definitely made all of us proud in your first year, seeing you yeah. out there. It's, it's yeah. been super fun to see you make the transition so quickly. You know, a lot of guys, rookie year, Special teams is where they mm. make their impact, which I'm sure you still did when you first showed up, but then taking strides yeah. to be 
that guy on the field just continue doing what you're doing, man. It's fun to watch. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't easy. It was tough. I mean, there was, it's a completely different game. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's so hard. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to lie. It's, uh, it's hard. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, special teams is, uh, I mean, I'm always down to, to mm-hmm. do that on the field goal. So just doing the Iron Cross stuff. This, this guy is a reason for one of my touchdowns in college. Ah, I remember. Yeah. Broke, I remember. broke right through the middle of the mm-hmm. field goal, and blocked he was it. the guy that blocked it. Ball what game was that? Uh, Colorado State. Colorado State. Nice. Yeah. And ball. Was that the one here? Yep, yeah. That was one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. My redshirt sophomore year. Scott yeah. puts his big uh, ball up yeah. right through the middle, and then the yeah. ball just pops out. Was that me. the COVID season? I think it was. It was, yeah. yeah. Because we, we, we had Ben Dooley come play D-line. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we had so many guys out. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. Wild yeah. year. Yeah. I, I remember that just because it was like one of the few games that I actually was able to attend that year. Yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah. That was like the first one they kind of let yeah. fans back yeah. to. Yeah, but it was like a hundred of them or something weird or yeah, it looked. Dally. It was like two family members and Jay Test. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> About right. Um, we'll Scott, accept that. Scott, we appreciate it, dude. Like... Um, it, as I, you know, we were talking with John Bates and, and Khalil Shakir, it's like so fun for the NFL and really the world to start to find out what we all know here in Boise, mm-hmm. and you, you certainly apply to that. And I got to say, like, there's also times where when guys leave and they go up to the league, like, almost like worry about them a little bit, like, grown men league, right? Mm-hmm. Ne- never right. even a doubt with you that you were gonna you were gonna fit in just fine and and handle it, and you've embraced it all and. Um, I think you've done more than that, too, because you also wind up on the Chargers mm-hmm. uh, Instagram account, I, I think just about more than in, in, than any rookie, maybe. Um, what, is it energy drinks? What is it? Before practice? <laughs> what, 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 what was that theme there? Uh, that was the uh, first day of pads, and you know, I, I'm a big – I love caffeine. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But uh, I just actually had my blood work done with one of my teammates' wives, who's a, you know, a health guru and – uh-oh. She hadn't, hadn't, haven't had caffeine in a week. Ooh. Okay, okay, so I'm okay. Cutting back, cutting back, so cutting taking back. care of my liver and all that kind of stuff. Uh, God, I want caffeine so bad. Oh. <laughs> is it um, coffee or is it the energy drink? Like, it's what is, what caffeine. Is it? yeah. Or just in general. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I don't you know drink you know, alcohol. I really yeah. that, that much. I mean, you know, occasionally if I go out to dinner or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, I've been drinking energy drinks for years. Yeah. You know, and bangs and rains. But I mean, uh, the accelerators is something that. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's like NSF certified yep. and it's safe to drink. And it was first day of pads and I just was like, you know, and as, as we walk onto the field, you know, there's the media girls and they, you know, have to record you. And I mean, if you do something cool, if not, you know, they just, it's whatever. But you don't make it. Yeah. So I was kind of coming up with ideas and I just felt like shotgunning one. And <laughs> that led to a relationship with the company. Yeah. So <laughs> there it is. I can get, yeah, so it's That's uh, how it's perfect. done, folks. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, but take care of yourselves, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not too many, but just enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Scott, uh, enjoy the offseason, man. Good luck on the golf game. We can't wait to see you back out on the field next year. Appreciate you, man. Thank All you. All right. Great having you, bro. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Scott Matlock at Calicanillo again. This is Jay Sports Bar serving the Idaho sports community. Ha! Ah! Put that on Channel 7. <laughs> He's such a huge part of what we do defensively. Things roll through 99. I mean, from his mentality to the run and the pass game, I mean, things go through him. Kendrick awaits the snap. Boise State rushes four. And they're going to get to him. Kendrick will be sacked for the fifth time inside the five. Matlock was there. Kendrick is sacked by number 99, Scott Matlock. Maybe Scott's not the one maybe getting the sack. Maybe he's not the one getting the TFL. But he's probably getting double or triple teamed so that somebody else can make that play. He's just that selfless leader. And that always does what he's supposed to do. Third down and eight from the Nevada 28-yard line. Illingworth is pressured. And Scott Matlock is there eating him up for the sack. As a leader, you know you're always going to get Scott's best from practice to the weight room to meetings. 